Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Cooler Master has a brand new redesigned third generation dual chamber AIO cooler, the ML240LV2. Now this is not the same cooler as the older ML240L and in this video I'm going to show you how to install it in an Intel 11.5X or LGA1200 based system. This video is for demonstration purposes only and this is not a review because every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement and every setup is different. So make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for your PC build. So let's get into it. This guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Cooler Master ML240 LV2 on an Intel desktop based motherboard. We also have an AM4 version if you want to check that out, it's in the top right hand corner right now and there's also a link down in the description. And make sure you watch this whole video before asking any questions because chances are I'm going to answer all of those inevitable questions in this video and I'm going to answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the MSI MAG B460 Tomahawk. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Intel i5 10600K. Now these parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only and this video is not a discussion about those parts, about pricing of those parts or performance of this cooler at all. It's purely just an installation guide. Yes, the fan placement and pump orientation in this video is correct. It depends on your case and the clearances in your case. There's been a lot of misinformation about this going around lately, but every cooler is different and all these pumps are designed to work in different ways from cooler to cooler. The coolant types, the coolant levels, these are all different things. This is all different from vendor to vendor and they all react different ways depending on who makes the cooler. Yes, this cooler and fans have RGB, but they are not addressable RGB. No, your motherboard does not have to have RGB to use this cooler. It is not required at all. Yes, you can put whatever fans you would like on this cooler. You can even do ARGB fans if that's your jam. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box. This does not include the CPU, the motherboard, or any actual PC hardware. I feel like a couple of people may have got confused with the wording on the last video, so I thought I would clear that one up. Yes, it works with almost every single Intel desktop motherboard and CPU combo you're gonna ask about in the comments from probably around 2008 into the foreseeable future. Yes, it will work with AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB and RGB Fusion. Yes, the thermal paste is included in the box. No, you do not need to use the included controller for lighting. You can use the motherboard's 12 volt RGB header if you have one. If not, just use the included cooler. And no, you don't have to fill the cooler up at all. You don't have to top it up. You don't have to maintain it. You don't have to do anything. So let's see what's in the box and how to install it. All right, ladies and gents, let's check out what's in the box in the Master Liquid ML240 LV2 RGB from Cooler Master. First off, we've got two of these brand new RGB sickle flow fans. They are not a RGB, they are only RGB. So you'll need a 12 volt RGB header to use these. Next up, we've got the installation guide. Now, <laughs> here's the funny thing about the installation guide. Guess what? We're not gonna be using it at all. So yeah, chuck that away. Next up, we've got the warranty information. Now this is actually pretty handy in case anything happens to the cooler or anything's not quite right with it when you get it. So yeah, make sure you uh, keep this handy for future reference. Here's all the mounting gear. We're gonna take a quick look at all of this stuff really quickly. This is for Intel and AMD based installations, but yeah, let's just take a quick look at what's in the bag. First off, we've got Yes, obviously the bag with all of the things inside of it. Inside that bag, there's the AIM-4 mounting brackets. There's also a bag of screws for the fans. This is also to mount the radiator in a different type of configuration. There's also this bag, which actually has all of the Intel mounting hardware and a few other little bits that we will be using in this guide as well. There's also this little RGB controller. This is a nice little inline RGB controller that you can use for other RGB products as well. There's also a tube of master gel pro from cooler mass that's pretty good thermal paste not gonna lie about that there's also a three-way rgb splitter this can only be used for rgb not ARGB. there's a two-way pwm fan splitter as well 
and we'll quickly take a look at that brand new cooler from Cooler Master, the ML240LV2. You'll notice that the radiator is slightly different from their older coolers. It's got a new finish and the pump top is completely redesigned. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the things we're going to need for this installation. We're going to need four screws to mount the brackets to the pump top itself. We're going to need both of the Intel brackets. We're going to need these four bolts to mount the backing plate to the motherboard itself. We're going to need four of the thumb nuts. Yes, they're called thumb nuts to mount the cooler to the back plate itself and the back plate that sits on the back side of your motherboard. Now it's a great time to mention that we need to visit our friends over at Peel Corp and peel the sticker off the bottom of the cold plate of the cooler so there is no interruption in that thermal interfacing. Make sure you do this otherwise yeah you've got bigger problems. Now locate both of the Intel brackets that we showed a little bit earlier so we can mount these to the pump top itself. And you'll notice there is this little locating notch on the pump top itself. And what you want to do is take a look at the bracket. There's also a locating notch on that bracket as well. What we're going to do is line those up on the top side of the pump top. We're going to put a screw from the cold plate side through those holes and fasten them so the bracket is now fastened to the cooler. And I'm gonna do that process again on each of the corners. And then what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you this from a slightly different angle as well so you can get a bit of an idea of how this goes on. It's all very straightforward. Even for first time builders, this shouldn't be too complicated. Look at the back plate. This back plate goes onto the back side of your 11 5X or your LGA 1200 motherboard. And you can use the double sided tape. I wouldn't recommend doing it for this installation. But what you want to do is put the back plate on a flat surface and lower the motherboard over the top of the back plate, making sure all of the holes align. Locate four of these bolts, yeah. Locate these four bolts and all we're going to do now is we're going to finger tighten them into each of the holes through the threads that are on the holes on that back plate and I usually do this in opposing corners because it helps it mount it nice and evenly. I'm just going to show you a different angle. These are threaded holes here and like I've already shown all you need to do is get those bolts and put the bolts in and fasten them by hand. Now you don't need any tools to fasten them, fastening them by hand will do just fine. Let's locate eight of these bolts and what we're going to do is actually use these bolts and place them through the holes on the fans for mounting. We're going to mount the radiator first. You can do this in a different order. It's completely up to you, but this is the way I would recommend doing it in a case like this. So put the radiator on the inside of the case with the screw that you've already passed through the fan and tighten one corner. Now the way I like to do this is actually doing opposing corners so it actually has some mounting pressure and the radiator is actually aligned correctly and you want to rinse and repeat that process with the second fan just so it's all held into place. Then locate the rest of the bolts and what you can do is go ahead and tighten the rest of them. Now you don't actually need to use a screwdriver for these bolts. You can finger tighten them up all the way and it should have more than enough mounting pressure for the radiator. Now locate both the power and the RGB cables from the fans and I would recommend passing this through to the back for easier cable management and for insulation a little bit later. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Now what we're going to do is apply thermal paste to the IHS on the top of the CPU itself. Now this is up for debate. This is the way I would recommend applying thermal paste. All you need to do is apply a P dot amount in the center of the IHS just as I'm showing right here. This is the way that I actually would recommend doing it. It, there is lots of debates on whether this is not the right way, but this is the way that works all the time. Locate these four thumb nuts. They look a little something like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower the cooler onto the IHS with that thermal paste you've already applied. And once you lower it on, give it a little bit of a wiggle to spread that thermal paste all the way around. And the way I recommend doing this is then just finger tightening each corner, but do opposing corners like we did with the bolts in the earlier steps and just rinse and repeat that process until all of the corners are in. Just finger tighten these in as much as they can go until they stop. And what I would recommend then is getting yourself a screwdriver and just tightening them up all the way until they stop and try not to over tighten these because this could make it a little bit harder if you need to loosen the cooler at a later stage in time and we're all done. This part of the video is common between both AMD and Intel installations. So what you're seeing here can be applied to both types of installations. And if you feel like you've seen this footage before, you have because it's in the AMD guide too. 
You'll notice there's two cables that come off the top of the pump top for this cooler. We're going to show you what to do with them now. I would recommend getting the RGB cable first, which looks a little something like this, and then passing that through to the back side of the case for easy cable management a little bit later on the guide. Now this cable is to actually power the pump, not to light it up, to make it actually pump the fluid through. Locate a CPU opt header. It might be labeled something slightly differently on your motherboard for, for Gigabyte motherboards and some ASRock boards it's labeled like this. It might be water pump or whatnot. And plug that into that header. You'll notice there's be one exposed pin, don't worry. You're not doing the wrong thing, you're good to go. What we're gonna do is plug in the two-way PWM fan splitter as well, just to make your life a little bit easier. Locate this end of the cable, and you'll wanna do almost the same thing as the last step, locate the CPU fan header on the motherboard, and what you wanna do is then plug that end straight into that header, then pass that cable also through to the back side of the case for easy cable management. And now we're gonna show you how to power the fans. Locate the PWM fan connectors that we passed through a little bit earlier in the guide and the cable that we just passed through from the CPU fan header. And it's as simple as just plugging in those cables and you should be good to go. It's very, very easy. I'm gonna show you two ways how to connect the RGB, but this is the common step between both of those ways. So try not to get confused. I'll try to make this as easy as possible. You'll need this three-way RGB splitter. Locate the RGB cable from either the fan or the pump top. It doesn't matter. As long as all three of these are plugged in, it should be pretty straightforward. And plug them into the splitter. And you'll notice that both of these arrows are aligned. And this means you've plugged it in the correct way. And what you want to do then is rinse it and repeat this process for the other fan or the pump top or whatever, making sure all three RGB cables are plugged in and making sure those arrows are aligned so we can move on to the next step. You may have been going through the box and wondering what these weird plastic things are for. Now these are actually to hold the cables into place and more specifically the RGB cables. They're very easy to use. All you need to do is basically do exactly as I'm showing put them over the top of the cables, and once you push the cables into the little holder, you can pull the cables as hard as you like and they won't become unplugged, and I really like these. Now I'm gonna show you the first way to do RGB. Now this might be the most uncommon way to do it, however, because it has an RGB controller in the box, this is the way that you would connect the RGB controller. What you need to do is locate that RGB controller. What we're gonna do is then go ahead and locate the four-way pins that come in the box as well, plug it into the end of the cable, plug it straight into the RGB controller, making sure both of those arrows are also aligned, getting the Molex power connector, yes, I know it's Molex, but I'm sure not many people will use this, uh, plug the power cable into the bottom of the controller, and then locate a Molex power cable from your power supply, and you wanna just plug that in and you should be good to go. And if this is the way you're gonna use it, the guide is now complete. But the way I'd recommend using RGB is getting this end of the RGB cable, passing it through to the front side of your motherboard, locating a 12 volt RGB header on your motherboard and plugging it straight in. That way you can control it and sync it with any other RGB products in your system. And if you had a little bit of luck, it should look a little something like this.
pretty much everything in this video and if you've got any questions feel free to head on over to our tech help discord i'll drop a link to that down below and if you've got any questions and something's not answered you can drop a comment down below but make sure you read all the comments because Pretty sure myself or someone else would have already answered all your questions already. And yeah, take that into consideration before asking anything because yeah, I just don't want you guys to waste your time asking questions that have already been answered. And if you like this video and it helped you get this cooler installed, please like and subscribe. Consider uh, clicking the join button or getting early access to videos like this over on Floatplane. And if you didn't like this video, tell us what you hated about it. Hit the dislike button twice. And if I'm irritating, also, let me know. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. Yeah. Nothing to say at the end today. Uh, although, there's a little bit of an Easter egg for people who hang around to this part of the video, Claire. Is there? Yes. In the AMD version of this video, I wore a thrill shirt, a light colored one. And for the Intel one, I wore a dark colored thrill shirt. So you can decide what that means. I know what it means. Thanks for watching.